Hi, welcome to Unit 1, AC 1.6. This is the section where you have to evaluate the different crime statistics. Um, and I'm going to try and explain why this section is not done very well. OK. OK, so it's day one. You've already been in the computer room for two and a half hours and you're pretty knackered. And you've got this final section to do where you've got to try and explain uh, the use of statistics and different type, types of crime statistics. So A, you, you're a bit exhausted. And secondly, this is really quite complicated. So it is worth having a really good set of notes available that really explain uh, the sort of strengths and weaknesses of the different crime statistics. So you don't have to do too much thinking. OK, and a, a lot of people often get a lot of the concepts confused. OK. So um, remember, this whole unit is about why the public don't really have a good understanding of of true crime levels. And you've already gone through sort of like the fact that crime isn't reported. Um, you've already gone through the way in which the media over represents and sensationalizes some crimes but completely ignores the others. But then you've got the whole issue of the crime statistics, which are really, really complicated. So that's why this is that's why the statistics are difficult to write about. OK, so I'm going to take you through the two types of statistics and you have got to write this up in your own words. Can I just remind you, please, don't copy out the textbooks. I know it's really tempting, but you will get zero marks. OK, now, in reality, you should, should be spending a good half hour at least on this section. It's an easy six marks to get. And I know six marks doesn't sound a lot out of 100, but that's half a grade. OK, so you could be moving your your marks up from a C to a B um, if you uh, do this section really well. So um, that's really important to be aware of. OK, so the first set of statistics are the official statistics uh, called the police recorded crime. So as you are well aware, um, a crime is committed and someone's got to notice it and feel that it's serious enough to, to go to the police. OK. And if the police also take it seriously, it will be recorded, OK? Uh, not just reported, but recorded. So you've got to ask yourself a number of questions. So the first one is, are these statistics reliable? Well, ideally, the police should be using the same criteria to record the statistics, OK? So anyone who comes forward, say, in uh, Newcastle or Cornwall or London with the same crime, the police should be going, yes, we're going to record it, and yes, we're going to record it in the same way. OK, so you have to answer that question. Are the statistics reliable? The second area to think about is, are they valid? And valid in this case, again, has a, a slightly different meaning to the everyday use of the word valid. But what it means is, is it truthful? Do these statistics reflect reality? And the short answer is no. So you have to explain why that is the case. Now, these statistics are collected by the 43 police services, given to the Home Office, and they are published. So are there any ethical issues in collecting this data? Well, probably not, no, because it's anonymous. And even if you get onto that website where you can spy on all your neighbours, the reality is you don't really know who has committed what crimes or what crimes have been reported and recorded. So. Um, there aren't any real, real ethical issues in collecting and using this data. Now, you then have to talk me through any additional strengths and weaknesses. So, for example, you know, we've had these crime statistics collected for years and years and years and years. So year upon year, you might be able to sort of see if there has been a particular rise in a certain type of crime or a, a, a reduction. And you might be able to link that to a certain social policy. So, for example, if um, there has been a, a real crackdown on knife crime, um, you might expect the number of knives being retrieved to have gone up, but hopefully the number of stabbings to have gone down. So, you know, you have to just talk through the strengths of using this type of data. It's very easy to get hold of. It's all on the Internet. It's free of charge. But a weakness, perhaps, is that it's actually not that easy to read. OK, and, you know, we have to work with the definitions that the police have have applied. We can't apply our own definitions and ask ourselves questions about this particular data. Now, obviously, why do we want this data? How do we use this data? Think through the, the policy implications. You know, the police, the Home Office, local authorities, 
even schools need to know what's going on in the local area so for example they may be able to do something about it so if for example there's been a high level of um, house burglaries then maybe the police need to step up um, their, um, doing their rounds uh, they might need to put in more CCTV they might need to warn uh, members of the public that there's been a spate of house burglaries and what they can do about it so so we need these statistics for lots and lots of different reasons okay so you're going to spend time talking through these issues but really you have to understand what reliability and validity mean to to really get over the idea of how useful these statistics are so please use the definitions we give you in class don't please use just general everyday definitions of reliability and validity okay so it's long since been recognized that the police statistics don't tell the whole story you might remember a few weeks ago when we were looking at uh, reasons why people don't report crime we gave you the metaphor of an iceberg and you know you can see the top of an iceberg and that's the, the crimes that the police are aware of but underneath the water there's a whole other host of crimes which either the police do sort of know about but they don't bother to record or uh, the police are just completely unaware of so years and years ago sociologists start to, started to put together what we call victim surveys and victim surveys are where thousands of people are interviewed to ask them about their experiences and their, their views on crime and what this tends to reveal is a much higher rate of serious uh, sorry a much higher rate of non-serious crime you know all the things you probably wouldn't bother the police with like uh, graffiti and vandalism and antisocial behavior you know because people for whatever reasons don't 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 think the police could be particularly effective but they can be a real blight on people's lives so um, so they are really important to record as crime so again you're asking the same sorts of questions is this information reliable is it collected in the same way by all the different researchers and to tell the truth yes it is because the researchers are well trained uh, they use a, a, a laptop when they go into people's homes and they have a set of um, questions which are pre-formulated, uh, um, it's structured questions, they're um, very sort of um, formal questions and they pretty much have yes no answers. So, you know, the researcher is asking the same questions in the same way and so a team of researchers is collecting reliable results. In terms of validity, are they truthful? Well, they'll always be victims who won't want to talk about you know the fact they've been victims of crime so for example if someone is a victim of domestic abuse uh, they may still feel very reticent to talk about it um, within their own home to a to a researcher but these um, victim surveys tend to be more valid than uh, official police statistics okay Again, are there any ethical issues involved in collecting the data? Well, again, in terms of publication, very little because it's all anonymised, although you might feel that, you know, people might find it very difficult to talk about these issues um, in terms of the sensitivities. Having said that, they would never agree to do the survey in the first place, so you've got to balance that out. If there are additional strengths and weaknesses, certainly compared to the police statistics, and at this point you're probably making comparisons to the police recorded uh, figures, please mention that. And we collect this data because it sort of fills in the gaps for the government, for the police service, for councils and schools. Um, it fills in the gaps where the police statistics are not giving us a full and complete picture of the, uh, the levels of crime in society. Okay, victim surveys also ask people about their fears about crime. And again, I think that additional information is also really useful. So overall, you are writing about two sets of uh, statistics. You need to be using reliability and validity correctly. And most of all, you need to leave yourself enough time to do this section. Otherwise, you're missing out on a fairly straightforward six marks. Okay, good luck.